In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to back up WordPress in cPanel. And once it's backed up, I'm going to show you how to restore WordPress in cPanel using those backup files that you created. If you have any questions for this tutorial, please leave them in the comments down below. I try to answer every single one. And if you like this video, please like it. My name is Bjorn Allpass from WP Learning Lab, where we help you get better at WordPress so you can earn more for yourself, for your clients, and for your business. If you haven't done so yet, please subscribe so you don't miss any future videos. And we're getting started on this one right now. We're going to back up and restore this website right here at wpspeedify.com. This is a lab domain. If you go to this site right now, you'll see something that resembles this. And this is a part of a tutorial series that I'm doing on how to speed up a website. Um, watch out for that on the channel coming soon. And we're going to back this website up and restore it through cPanel in the next few minutes. So first, we got to get into cPanel, which is inside of your hosting account. In my case, I'm using SiteGround. You should be as well, or some other host that is not an EIG host. Watch this tutorial up here about site lock, about why you should not use EIG hosts. And if you are in your cPanel, you then go into, well, let's go to cPanel first. And then once you're in cPanel, we need to zoom in a little bit so you can see what's happening. And inside of the cPanel, we have to do two things to back it up and then two things to restore it. We have to back up all the site files in the file manager or via FTP, if you're more comfortable with FTP. And we have to back up the database using the PHP MyAdmin software in cPanel. First, let's back up the files. And then restoring is just the opposite. We upload the files back to the server through File Manager, and then we import the database back into PHP MyAdmin. So first, let's open File Manager. Let's go to the home directory. And in here, if you have sub accounts, they may be listed right here. You probably have to go into public underscore HTML. And in here, the sub accounts in my case are called Brizzy, Elementor 2019, get WP Astra and WP Speedify, there's two of them. And likely this one is the accurate one. No, it's not. WPSpeedify.com. Okay, this is where all the files are. So these are the files for this website. I'm gonna highlight all the files. Just shift clicking to highlight all of them. I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna choose compress as a zip file, and I'm going to call this zip file full backup, and click on compress files. Now this will zip all the files, which will make it easier to download them. This is not possible via FTP. If you want to zip the files, you have to do it via File Manager in cPanel. Via FTP, it's going to download all the files to a folder on your hard drive, all individually. You can zip them on your hard drive later if you want to but you can't zip them via FTP. Click on close when that's done, then click on reload, and we have our full backup zip file right here. And I am going to right click it and choose download. Now it's downloading it right to my hard drive. Now that's downloaded, let's check it out on our hard drive. This is the zip file right here, full backup. It is 94.3 megabytes. I'd be able to back this up using a plugin in WordPress, a free plugin, but if when your website's too large, the free plugins no longer work because they limit you by the amount you can back up as in file size you can back up. And if your website is beyond that limit, you have to go to the pro version and then back up using the pro version, which you have to pay for. What I'm showing you here today is free and you can do this anytime, but it is manual. So there's pros and cons, but I always believe that you should know how to do something a plugin does on your own before you let the plugin do it. And that goes for backups as well. So now we have the files of the website. Now I'm gonna go Back in the cPanel, I'm going to leave that tab open. I'm going to open PHP MyAdmin. I'm just going to control click to open that in the new tab. I'm going to find the database for this website. And my databases in here are fairly random names. There's two ways you can go about this. You can go into every single one of these databases. Let's go to this one, for example. Go to the options file underscore options, or options table, I mean. And here you can see if this is the correct site that you're looking for. And that's the slow way, kind of trial and error. The faster way is going back into your files going to the WP config file, click on edit and edit again. And here it will show you database name right here. So this database is WP SPE. So let's go back into PHP my admin and here it is WP SPE. So let's open that. Let's click on the options table just to confirm. And here's the accurate domain name. This is the table that we want. Now databases is where all the content of your site lives. 
the files provide storage for the images and templates that this content in the database will be fed into. So all the written content, all the text, all the settings, where the, the, the images are, like you have an image uploaded to your server in the files, but what is the URL to that image? Where is that image on your website? All that information is stored in the database. To export the database, make sure you click on the top level of the database and go to export. And we can just use quick export, that's good enough. Click on go. And now our database is being downloaded. It's gonna wait a few seconds while that downloads. And then we're gonna do something really crazy. I do not recommend you do this. I'm just doing this for the purposes of this video. I'm gonna check all these boxes. Go down to the very bottom, check all options down there, and I'm going to drop all these tables. Yes, they're all gone. The database is still here, but all the tables are gone, meaning all the information that is used to construct our site is gone. If we come back out here to the website, and I refresh, it asks us to install our website, and it's gonna go as a fresh install from the very beginning. Now to compound this problem even further, I'm gonna delete all of the files for the website as well. I'm gonna pretend the website is just gone. Not gonna delete the backup. Actually, yes I am, I'm gonna delete everything. Delete all those files. Now our directory is empty. Now I come back out here and we have an internal server error. Our website is, it's gone. So now we start the second half of the tutorial, which is how do we restore our website from the backups we made? Hopefully we did those backups properly, which I think we did. And we're gonna find out in just a few minutes. First, let's go right back to the very beginning, back into our cPanel. The first thing we wanna do is upload our files. So let's go to File Manager, Go to home directory or even the root directory will work. Find our folder, which is wpspeedified.com. I want to upload our backup files into here. Let's click on upload. Click on choose file. I'm going to choose our full backup. Click on open. Now it's going to upload the 90 megabytes of files. Up here it shows our maximum file size allowed for upload is 15.42 gigabytes, which is huge. If your website exceeds that, what you can do is go into WP Uploads folder, which is where the bulk of the size of your website will be because that's where your images are stored and all your media is stored. You can go and zip up each individual folder inside your WP Uploads and download those individually. And if you do it that way, guaranteed, this will be less than your upload limit. Our upload's done, so it's in the bottom right as complete. We can close this. We can refresh out here, click on our backup, click on Extract. Click on Extract Files, click on Close once that's done, reload again, and here are our files again. We can delete the backup we uploaded. And the WP content area I was just telling you about where the bulk of your website is, is right here. And if you go into Uploads, you'll quite often see things in folders. These are images from 2018, and they're broken down by month. And these images from 2019 also broken down by month, the month they were uploaded to your site. So if you find your file size is too big to be uploaded, you can come in here, zip each of these individually, and then upload them individually. That's one way you can get around the file upload limits in cPanel. So now that we have our files back, we have to get our database back. Because if we come back out here, we now are back to install WordPress, but we don't want that, we want our website back. So let's go into cPanel again, go to PHP My Admin. Control clicked to open that. This is our database that we dropped. Let's go to import. Let's choose file. Choose the SQL file here, open it, and then just click on go. Save all, keep all the settings as they are. Click on go, and now, please be patient. File's being uploaded. It has been uploaded. If we click on the database, this looks pretty similar to what we had before. If we come back out here and refresh, our website's already installed. Because we're at this URL, let's go back to the home page. Here we go, here's our website. Back and restored. Now the one thing I'd be asking is what if you don't have this database to restore to? Then you have to make a database. So you'd come into cPanel and you go to MySQL databases. You enter a database name here, let's just make a Funky one, click on Create Database, go back, and before you go back, copy this to a notepad or somewhere. Copy it to somewhere where you can copy and paste it into the config file in just a minute. 
So copy that to somewhere, then create a username and generate a password. Create the user and copy that username to a notepad as well. And now we have to connect the username to the database. And I think it's this one that is made. I don't even remember. Good. So whatever the, the database and username you just created, make sure you know what they are. And then you click on add to add them together. Choose all privileges. Choose make changes. And now this database user that you created is able to use this database with the password that we just created. So then we go back into cPanel. Oh, let me back up. This database will now appear here. So if I refresh, we don't have a new database with this gibberish right here. We can now import our SQL file into this database and then update our credentials inside the wp-config file to be the database username, database name, database username, and password that we just created. And then now we've connected our old site to a new database and it should load just fine, just like it did here. And that's how we can back up and restore WordPress in cPanel. So that's how it works. I hope this video helps you. If you haven't done so yet, please make sure you click subscribe and ring the bell so you don't miss any future videos. And then check out this video up here, which shows you how to speed up your website once you have it all backed up and restored. That'll make your website a whole lot faster. And this one down here will help you make your website more secure. So check that out too. My name is Bjorn Allpass from WP Learning Lab. Until next time, keep crushing it, and I will see you in the next video.